Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, what's up, what's up, people? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Welcome to the Take Out with me, Kev the Rev, and Angie, Pastor Angie. It's so nice to be here today. I'm oh, excited. Come on, come on. I'm so excited to be here as well. <laughs> and so today we uh, begin this show. Pastor Angie, what's this show about? It's about the Take Out. This is the Take Out where we get to reflect together come on. the Take Outs as we go through the Bible reading of the Word together in the New Testament that we're doing as a community. Yep. And we're going to be reflecting on what God is saying to us. And I'm really thrilled about it. Wow. And so if you thought it was about food takeouts, sorry, it's going to be about <laughs> the bread of life takeout. That's right. I yeah. love it. Yeah, I've heard you. I've heard you. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. <laughs> I'm and, excited. And so we begin off uh, with the um, with the book of Matthew. That's right. I'm going to be reading, as you've said, through the New Testament in one year. A new version. You're using the Bible Project uh, mm-hmm. New Testament yes. in one year. Yeah. And so you can get that uh, on your phone. Start uh, yeah. a reading plan with your family, That's with right. your workmates, That's right. with, with your friends DG. around you. Yeah. And then we got to be your plug every Monday. Every Monday, expect a plug. Yes. You yeah. got to be telling you what you're gonna read that week, what to look out for, and then giving you our specific yeah. takeout. Yeah. But the book of Matthew is interesting. It's a wonderful book. Oh, come on. Uh, first of all, begin. It's the first book after. Mm. the silent years yes. eh? 400 years of silence <laughs> yes and then what? boom money yeah. happens yeah <laughs> it's a beautiful book come on beautiful book um something interesting uh yes so it's it's presenting jesus as king it's mm. presenting jesus as king of israel better than moses yeah um and that's why because it's presenting jesus as king that's why it starts with that genealogy that's right if you are presenting someone as a king or as you a ruler, start with the genealogy you need to know where they've come yeah, from yeah. and so presents the genealogy of jesus and all that uh and then very interesting only the book of matthew mentions the wise men oh yeah yeah because wise men i i, I believe it's like those you know how De- daniel was a wise man mm-hmm. in the, and wise men were advisors to oh, the king yeah yeah and so only the book of matthew actually mentions, mentions the wise men because they, they deal with kings uh in that one so i believe matthew felt it wise to include them uh, in the story what, what's up what, what else for you in, i as think far as why i love matthew as the first book is number one because he, of who matthew is oh, who matthew on. represents mm. because matthew was a tax collector he was mm. a sinner uh he was the guy on the outskirts mm. uh, and i feel like because of the type of man that he was, I feel that he presented the gospel in a very different oh, way. Come on. And so I feel like his his perspective, because he was Jewish mm. and he had been shunned by the Jewish community, oh. I feel like when he presented and said, this is the king, oh, this is the on. guy we waited for. Mm. Uh, and then um, because everyone had shunned him, he said, no, no, no. In fact, I'm the one who knows mm. <laughs> that this is actually the king. Because then they had, well, like, kill the guy yeah and so i love his perspective i mm. love that he was you know i mean you know the idea is that he's the one who wrote as a tax collector as a well-read man mm. he presented the king who the jews had been waiting for wow. in a very interesting way so yeah. i love it wow wow first time i love your perspective yeah that's exactly. already my takeout <laughs> <laughs> no we're not even going to the main takeout <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> We're getting there. Wow, wow. Stay tuned, people. I so what's it. your what's your main takeout as we begin off Matthew chapter one? Because this week we are looking at Matthew chapter one, one all yeah. the way to chapter six. That's right. What's what's some what are some major themes and then what's your main takeout from them? So what I like about Matthew one to six is that it begins first with uh the genealogy, like we said, breaking mm. down um the birth of Christ. And, and the, what we're calling this week is the perfect setup. Wow, the perfect setup. I love setup. it because it's about the God of the perfect setup. Mm. God was silent for 400 years. Imagine that. And it's not that God wasn't, was not, uh, was silent. He wasn't speaking mm. uh, the way they were familiar with him speaking. But what he was doing is that he was setting up the scene uh, perfectly for the birth of Christ. Come on, come on. So he was quiet, but he was, uh, he was there present when people were giving birth. Mm. Uh, because, you know, for three, I think it was, um, it says uh, at the end of the, the, the Matthew 1, just at the bottom there, it says all generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations from David mm-hmm. to the, you know, to, to the deportation of Babylon, 14 generations from the deportation of Babylon to Christ, 14 generations. Come on. And so it just keeps breaking down how God was involved in the little detail. And so he was, he was uh, uh, 
quiet but mm. not absent. He was quiet but not absent. I know, right? <laughs> Come on. Love it. He was quiet. He was not he was not speaking the way you're mm. familiar. He wasn't doing dramatic things, but God was still there so setting the scene for every Christ. child being born yeah. leading to Jesus. God was like perfect setup. Perfect. So setup. people are like quiet. I know. But for him, he's actually aligning them. Even 14 generations, he knows exactly when mm-hmm. Jesus is ca- going to mm-hmm. come into the mm-hmm. scene. And so everybody's like, Where is God? Where is but God? God is like, look at the next child. Look at the next child. Look at the next family. I know. Oh, right? come on. So it's sweet. It's so sweet because you're like, we always say that we want God to move a certain way. We want God mm. to speak a certain way. But God is always setting the scene yeah. for the perfect setup yeah. for you. And so it's, for me, what I like about it is that it's about surrender. Yeah. It really comes down to that. Mm. Because even now when Jesus is born or when Jesus speaks, or when, when the angels uh, speak to Mary, mm. he's setting the scene. Come on. And she has to surrender and say, your will be done. Mm. And then the hubby, I love it because the hubby, uh, Joseph, the, the guy was engaged to her. He, he was planning to secretly, uh, what's it called? Divorce her. Yeah. Secretly divorced. It wasn't even a public thing. Yeah. But the God of the perfect setup would not allow that. He Come met on. with him in dreams Come on. and told him, brother, this is my plan. Mm. And the guy surrendered to that. And God was setting the scene for Christ to come. Yeah. And so I feel like there's always your part in surrendering to mm. God for the perfect setup. Wow. I know as you speak about that, it's very interesting for me, the kind of people who are actually mentioned still mm. in the genealogy mm. of Jesus mm. and how they were set up That's to right. accept that. That's right. It's almost like the setup is made, but you got to bite. You have to take it. You have That's to right. say, I want in. Mm. Uh, I mean, look at uh, some of these uh, ladies mentioned here. Rahab. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, her story is wild. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> and then a setup comes and in a moment she has to decide Will I put will I put up the, the spies Imagine. or will I not? Mm. And that was the perfect setup. She bites, she's included exactly. in the story. I love it. Yeah, the same story for Bathsheba, mm. again included in the story. Yeah. The st- Ruth. Hey. Perfect setup. That's like it. will you follow Naomi into a, a land she had come from or yeah. will you not? Perfect, perfect setup perfect again. Setup. I love and it. it all comes with surrender and say, where you go, I'll go. Oh, I will on. follow. Mm. Hey, I'll follow you. And so it's just that thing of making that decision. To follow the God of the perfect come setup. On, come I on. mean, even the 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 what's it called the magi, the wise, the wise men coming yes. in, these guys came and they gave gold, frankincense, and mar. Mar. Mm. This is what they needed when they were escaping. Yes. So when they escaped to Egypt, they needed the gold. They yes. were broke. They had yep. been living in it was uh, in in Bethlehem, settled there for a while. But then God was like, "This is what you need for your next." Uh, season of life yeah and the god of the perfect setups made it that they came just in time come on and gave them the resources for the next season of their lives wow and so i feel like when i whenever i read this i'm always like it's just a few in fact we're not even entered the uh, five <laughs> even we're just in chapter two and i'm like gosh yeah. you are the god of the perfect setup True. and i love it and i and i and i come and i say am i surrendered that way hmm. that um I will experience the God of the perfect setup. Are you surrendered that way? Come on. Yeah, come that on. I experience it. And you know, the sad story is the people who are set up, but they never took them. Mm. The, the, they mm. never entered yeah. into the setup. That's right. For example, Herod was set up. Mm. Like wise men come to ask for directions from your house. Mm. You guy, then God did not invite invented Google Maps <laughs> by then. Because like, yo, she would not have got the story. That's right. But he's so set up. God wants him to know the story. God wants him to know there's a king. You can submit yourself to him. He's set up. He's given the story. But instead of biting, instead of entering the yeah. story, he yeah. chooses to block the story. <laughs> but you cannot, you cannot block God's story. You can't. The other people who... They were given the perfect setup, and but they miss. miss a story, is the, the scribes... Mm. The, the chief priests, mm. those guys who are like guardians of the law, yeah? guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why they miss the stars. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> they are guardians. Anyway, these guys, they come, they are asked, they open the books and like, Yo, he'll be born in Bethlehem. Yeah. That's what the word says. Yeah. It's going to be here. They know exact. all they needed to do was to follow the wise Imagine man. Imagine all they needed to do. That's all. But the wise men went and the guys are left behind. They left them had to like they had one, tea. Yeah, I know. They had one job. They had one job. But you know what? It was easier for them to remain in proximity mm-hmm. with Herod mm-hmm. than to go to a king who was still wow. a baby. Wow. I know. Drop mic. Drop mic. Right? Can you drop this? <laughs> Technical bench. Can, you, can this go down? 
you know, it's easy. You can miss the setup mm. because of where you are. It's already familiar. You already have proximity to the people who, you know, are calling the shots. You already have proximity to the king. Oh, wow. But when someone tells you there's another young man being born somewhere, like when they get older, we'll serve them. And so you miss a setup on account of your comfort currently. And you know, it's interesting because we're just at the beginning and we're seeing God is setting the scene for Mm, a miracle for us. Come on. God is setting the scene for you to love his word, for you to desire him more. He's setting the scene for the perfect setup Mm. for the rest of this year. And so what I feel is it's about you coming and saying, Father, I know you're setting the scene for Mm. something. I'm not going to miss out on a miracle. I'm not going to miss out on my blessing. Mm. Where you go, I'll go. go. Whatever you say, I'll I'll say. Maybe even somebody here has gotten this onto this Mm. and not onto the study, Uh, get onto the study so that you don't miss out on what God is doing because God is setting up the scene for his presence. I love it. I love that. So if you're there, you've not started doing the one year Bible, please, it's as easy as like data kidogo, Mm. get onto the platform, start reading some people because at some point later in the year, it's going to be hard. You need people who will tell you, we've not seen you posting, we've not seen you commenting, we've not seen you doing something. Uh, People will be able to hold you because God is setting you up. As you get saturated with God's word, I truly believe God is setting us up for something great uh, uh, later in the year. Something where you'll be in a situation and be remember God's word said. God's word said. God's word said. Mm. Or you'll be getting into a situation and say, I'll get into it because God's word says. You exactly. Know, and you'll be able to enter different situations. Come I love on. it. Mm. I think the other thing I love is how God sends in this story, he sent um, uh, John the Baptist ahead. Mm. And so it, God is the God of the perfect setup. Come on. And so he even prepares uh, Joseph to help ease Jesus into his, I mean, Joseph, John the Baptist, to help ease, ease Jesus into his ministry. True. And I love it because I look at that and I see God, you are so faithful. If you did this for your son, who you, you set up to save mm. the world. What more will you do for us as your children? There's nothing he will not do. Mm. And so I think we live in fear. We live in anxiety, not sometimes uh, wanting to take the next step. But I'm like, imagine God has already set the scene. There's a John the Baptist who's been preparing the way for you, whether you know it or not. Whether you know it or not. Come on. Whether that is your pastor, whether that is your parents, whether Mm. that is a colleague in your workplace, God has set the scene. He's setting up the scene for God, for him to work his thing in and through you. What? I love it. What? And it's about surrender. Mm. It's about surrender. And so I pray that guys would have courage and boldness mm. to walk in that surrender. Mm. Yeah. It's wow. so sweet. Ay, it's so amazing. It's so sweet. I love the <laughs> word of God. To me, the word of God is life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I mean, and it's the, 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 the word is living and active. Yes. Re, you know, it's living and active, able to divide soul and, you know, uh, soul and spirit. It's active. Mm. So it's not just words written 2,000 years ago or whatever. It's actually living and active and is able to speak into our situations today. Exactly. And so even this God of the, the perfect setup. So the funny thing is that, um, uh, you know, then God sets up uh, um, Jesus, has John the Baptist come the way, then he sends him off to mm. temptation. So we get into the temptation. The bump. And the, know, bump on the, and way. the bump on the way. And you know that our, our, our faith as Christians were like, you know, God, the God of the perfect setup does not bring drama. Mm. You know, once you accept him. My God is not a God of drama. My God is not a God of suffering. My God is... Those are the prayers we make. <laughs> I paint every drama in my way. It means mm. that if the shower is not working in the morning, the I'm devil is against me. Mm. I'm like, that's not it. Mm. I mean, there's always going to be drama in your life, True. but God gives you strength to walk through Come it. On. So the God of the perfect setup, uh, these guys end up in Egypt because even they shouldn't have gone to Egypt, but they mm. end up in Egypt. They come back. This You meet, um, uh, what's his name? John, who encourages you. Then God sends you to the wilderness. Yes. The guy goes into the I wilderness. I think the Bible says he was... Um, uh, led. Look, look at this, verse, chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the, the spirit, spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Eh. Hey. Imagine, it is specific. What? I always don't like that part. I'm always like, Father, may you not lead me that way. But it's, it's like, if you are sent... <laughs> <laughs> and with a specific assignment. <laughs> I love what I love is you know we're getting into the first week. We're also gonna start fasting this week. Oh yeah. We're also gonna start fasting, kicking off fasting. What yeah. I love about this section is that Jesus hungered. Mm. Just that word. Yeah. <laughs> it ministers yeah. to me. Yeah. But he was he hungered, he thirsted. 
but he desired God above more, Come on. above above that. He desired mm. to see God do it, mm. and then how he responded to the devil was with a word. Mm. Every time, yeah, devil, da, 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 it is written. It is written. Da, 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 da. It, it is, is written. written. Even sometimes the devil responds with it is written. <laughs> it is written. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> it is written that the angels will come and uh, you know hold yeah. you. <laughs> I'm like, but the word is your Whoa. your weapon, mm. and so even as we we kick off this week, it's with that understanding. This word is your weapon. It come is on. the perfect setup mm. for you to overcome. You know, there's something I'm seeing as you're saying because the devil says it. It's also because there's a point he says that you yeah. know, it is written the angels will come and hold you. Whatever. The word of God is a double-edged sword. Mm. Um. But you can choose to use it to destroy or to build. Yes. Um. Uh, you can choose to say, but God's word says, but it's because you are excusing <laughs> something that you want for you. Yeah. And so it's not just, it says, but this also brings conviction. Mm-hmm. It brings clarity. It brings direction. It does. It does. You need to choose to walk in that direction. Otherwise, you can still use God's word to justify mm-hmm. wrongdoing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true, by the way. Yeah. I mean, the, the word of the Lord is so powerful. What I like about it, uh, this this what I like about getting into because this is just the first week mm. when you see the word of the Lord as your weapon when you see it as your strength mm. then you say this is how I'm armed to live my life come on with the word of the Lord it means that whether I'm in the wilderness mm. whether I'm in my season of peak and joy and favor come on the word of the Lord God of the perfect setup has set it up so that this becomes everything to me mm. and scripture becomes the thing you cling to. Scripture, scripture becomes your hopes. Scripture becomes your weapon for life. Come on. And so me, I've told, I, I remember when I, I went through a whole season in my own personal life and I said, as long as God is with me, I can face anything. Mm. Whether it is joy or low season, but the word of the Lord must be with me. Come on. And so I enjoy and I find it sweet because the God of the perfect setup mm. will make it so that I will be okay. Yeah. But I need his word to comfort me, to strengthen me, to encourage me, to to express my joy. Yeah, come uh, on. Because there are seasons of joy where I'm like, oh, thank God mm, for this word. Mm. And so that's what I pray for many of us as we read the word. And come I'm on. really excited. Yeah. Wow. It's just week one. It's just week one. <laughs> and I love how it ends because it ends with the beginning of the Beatitudes. Oh, mm. yes, yes. And so it begins with us on the Sermon on the Mount. Yep. Sweetness. Mm. Sweetness. Uh, the sweetness of you know, blessed are those, mm. blessed are those. But which which beatitude really like blesses you? Mm. I know I know all of them bless us. I but know which one is it? Go, like... Um, I think for me it's um, blessed are those who mourn; they will be comforted. Because there are very se- many seasons of no, mm. but I I I praise God because I know my comfort. Come on, I'll be comforted. Come on, and so Come it's, on. it's only a season. Mm. It's only a season, mm. and so it gives me perspective. What's wow. your favorite? I think it's it's funny how wife says, "Let God be true and man a liar." Mm. So the 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 beatitude that says, "Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth." We always think that those who inherit are the feisty, the, the like, you know, like, go get a go for it. What are you saying? <laughs> like, you know, but somehow when God says, bless the big foundation, like, what do you mean? Mm. Like, <laughs> it's upside down. It's upside down. Like, you know, they're, they're the ones who end up, you know, getting it. Like, ah, come on. Yeah. yeah. So interesting there. And mm. I think what I like about how it ends, that it actually ends on a high. Mm. Because it ends on the God of the perfect setup is setting it up for you to live this blessed, beautiful, mm. gracious life. And yes. it's one of surrender. Yeah. And he, he it ends with prophetically encouraging you, prophetically speaking grace to you, prophetically, um, um, you know, b- uh, uh, what's it called Boster, bolstering you up for the season that God wants you to, mm. to walk in and live in mm. and so I enjoy the beginning of the, the Sermon on the Mount yeah. uh, but next week things are going to get uh, we're going to see Ooh, some things yeah. but I'm excited for it and I'm excited for that conversation <laughs> because I think then it gives meat into this is what it means to be called as a son and a daughter of Christ. True, true. This is what it means to follow me. And so he gets into the meat of that mm. because he's already just, you know, invited some guys to walk with him. You get to see, um, this is what it means for me to follow. This Come is what on. it means for me to be a disciple of Christ. Mm. And you have to make some hard decisions. Come on. Getting in is sweet. And it's, <gasps> yeah, it's like marriage. You're like, I love you, babe. Hey, let's do this. And then you're told, die. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so that's why I'm excited for next week's discussion because I feel like it's it's the real meat of what it means for us to follow. Yeah, wow. but it begins with a life of surrender. Wow. That's it, guys, for today. The takeout with me, Kev the Rev, and, and Angie. <laughs> and uh, we've seen the God of the perfect setup. Um, what is God setting you up for? Mm. Somehow you need to understand it as you go through God's word. Um, in fact, I want to ask you to, as you pray and fast this week, could you ask God to open up your eyes for what he's setting you up for? Because, you know, uh, yeah. if you fast and you don't know why you're fasting for, mm. it's very easy at some point to get, you know, to just... Get yeah, tired. that's right. But if Jesus knew, hey, there's something coming up, I'm gonna be tempted at the end. You know, he he goes with the fact yeah. in a certain you yeah. know in, in, perspective, yeah. Yeah. perspective, strength, and all yeah. that. And so, if you're there, I want to encourage you: start the fast today. Don't don't postpone. Don't mm, postpone. Mm. Uh, we're doing liquid only fast from social media, apart from this. Uh, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you can feed your soul. Yeah, feed your soul basically. It, you know, don't. It's, it's not for you know like why are we not doing this? No, it's for yourself exactly to feed your soul allow God, God to feed you in every possible way God bless you see you next week mm-hmm.